Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today I got a pretty exciting project for you guys, which is a hardware monitor for your PC using a Raspberry Pi. So let's get started. Well, if you guys didn't know, I recently built my PC with the 3080 Founders Edition and I'm going to leave a little demo right here. And one of the things that is missing from that computer is a system monitor where I could see my GPU stats and my CPU stats, as well as other stats I want to display on this guy. I've seen some available options out there where you actually plug a monitor into your HDMI port on your graphic card, but I didn't think that was the best way to go around it because one of the things I don't like is mouse trapping along with that idea. What I mean is when you drag your mouse all the way to the edge of your screen and it ends up on that monitor and sometimes you don't know about it. Yeah, that's my way of saying mouse trapping. And, and also you use up an HDMI port that you might be using for something else because nowadays the graphic card only comes with one HDMI and the others are display port. Anyway, this method that we're using is wireless. So you don't have to actually connect anything to your PC other than a USB power. And it uses a software to transmit all the information to your Raspberry Pi for display. What's cool about this, you could also use many different displays. Instead of just a three and a half inch, which I'll be using today, you could use a five inch screen or any other screen and also screens that doesn't even have HDMI the ones that uses GPIO for your Raspberry Pi it's also programmable in here so you don't have to see that little dongle stick out so before we jump into it a word from my sponsor which is private internet access if you guys are not using VPNs please do so because that is the best way to mash yourself from your ISPs or wherever you are. If you're in like a public cafeteria or Starbucks or something like that, you want to be able to encrypt your data so nobody can see what you're doing. And one of the best ways is to get a VPN. And what I use is private internet access. Now, if you've been a long time viewer of this channel, you probably know, I've been using it for about eight years. I have no issues with it. And with the recent updates that they have and the ability to use WireGuard, I'm getting four times the speed as I was before. Yeah, it's, it's just free improvement basically. And having that amount of bandwidth allows me to stream high quality content. Now, private internet access is basically worldwide. They have almost 10,000 servers in 70 different countries. And I'm not even saying this, with like some prompt or something like that. I just know this because I've been using them for so long. If you see my previous video, way back when, I think a year ago, they were only allowing five devices for one account. And now they upped that. They put 10 devices per account. So you could actually get more devices. They also support every operating system that's out there, which is Windows, Mac OS, iOS, Android, Linux, Raspberry Pi, anything that you can think of, it will work on it. So you don't have to worry about that. They also have 24 hour support. So if you run into any issues and I actually have ze almost zero downtime, I mean, there are times where it's down and I know that they're doing upgrades, but it'll switch the server and I have no issue. And if you're using their desktop app, there's the ability to disconnect your internet if the VPN does go down. Another big thing about this company, why I chose to use it is because they have no logs if i don't want the cafeteria or the cafe or any my isp to know what i'm doing i wouldn't want them to know either so they have no logs whatsoever it also allows for p2p and if you guys don't know what that is don't worry about it my main use scenario for this sometimes is to move to another country so i could watch stuff that's available in different places that's not available in the states but yeah you could do that with this as well and best of all if you're using the link down in the description below you get three free months of private internet access so not only do they have a 30-day money back guarantee you also get three free months so really you have nothing to lose so in this setup what i'm going to be using is my three and a half inch screen that actually requires an hdmi dongle so it actually display as hdmi display but it gets powered by the board and i'm using a raspberry pi 3 and if you have noticed i've been doing projects with the older boards like the raspberry pi 0 w recently and also now the raspberry pi 3 because i have those laying around so might as well try to utilize them you can also use this as a raspberry pi 4 it's up to you another thing is a usb pinout connector from your motherboard to a regular usb a connector so this way we could hide all the cables inside the motherboard without having to route any cables outside like you would if you were to plug in a normal screen. Now I'm gonna jump over to my desktop right over here and I'm gonna show you the website. So the first thing you need to do is hop over to their website, which I'll leave linked down in the description below and everything that we would talk about, especially the three and a half inch screen that I'm using and maybe the five inch screen that I have laying around. And in there you could see like, this is really cool how you can make your display look the way you want it to. Um, you need to download two programs, one, which is the windows program. So I'm gonna head over to download for windows and first install this program. If you install this program, you don't have to worry about trying to connect to it later. So it's, it's best to install this program first. 
So once you're done installing this program, next we need to grab the Raspberry Pi image, which I already did, and we are gonna be flashing it onto an SD card. Now this doesn't require much horsepower, and I'm gonna to get to that in a little bit on what I mean by horsepower. So let's burn this image. Now I'm gonna to go to Raspberry Pi Imager, go to Custom, and drop this image in there and choose the SD card. I got a 16 gigabyte in there and I'm just gonna write. So while we are waiting for this image to write, I'm gonna talk a little bit about this. One of the things that I notice on the motherboard pinouts is that the voltage that it comes out or the amperage that comes out is not powerful enough for a Raspberry Pi 3. So you'll get that little lightning bolt icon on the top right. So one of the things I did to circumvent that was to modify the config file, lower the CPU speed and undervolt the CPU to re eliminate that little lightning bolt so I don't have to draw that much power from the USB port. All right, we are done writing and I am gonna remove the card and put it back in to show you what I'm talking about. So let me take that out, pop that back in and I should be able to get a boot file folder here. Now in here in the con, oops, sorry about that, uh, config file, I'm gonna go over to a text editor and you could see it's actually set up for minimum frequency. It doesn't require much to run this guy really. So what I ended up doing for the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, which is the one I'm using right now, I added arm underscore frequency equals 1000. So I lowered the clock and over underscore voltage equals negative two. You could go a little bit more, maybe negative four on this, depending on how your situation is. And it, the only time that this really affects the system is on the boot up process. It does take a little bit to boot up into that screen, but once you're at that screen, it doesn't require much to run it. So it's okay to actually slow the frequency down and also under voltage so you don't get that little lightning bolt. And by under volting, you do have less heat. It, it helps a lot overall. So that's why I kept it this way. Now they do have a temp limit of 75 where it does like some shut off. So you got to uh, if you if your CPU case is over 75 inside, you should kind of be worried, but you could actually adjust this if you need to. So it could be like 80 or 75 or 70, depending on what you want to use it for. But the only thing I really changed was the arm frequency and the older over voltage to negative two. All right, so once I hit save, I'm ready to boot this guy. Now it is pretty tricky to kind of set this up for the first time and it's also cool. So I'm gonna show you this right now. I'm actually connected using my phone because my Raspberry Pi refuses to connect to something that doesn't have an internet or it's having an issue with it. So uh, what I'm gonna be going is to that IP address that it told me about earlier, which is 192.168.4.1. And in here, you will see the main page and this is where you could configure everything so you would go down over to configuration wizard and yes you could use your phone to set it up too uh, you would put your location in which is a united states for me and uh, time zone would be new york all right next your ssid and everything next the name of uh, your network name, which is Mobro, that's default. If you install the application on your PC, that's what it's gonna be. You could always change it in the settings on the software on, this, on your PC, but for now, we're gonna use that. And we don't wanna keep it as a static IP because if my PC changes IP, it's never gonna connect. Now, here's the interesting part. You have the display driver. Right now, it's actually pushing out the HDMI, so that is fine for me. But if you go down this list, you will actually see all the drivers that you need. So you, if you got a good TFT, and you got a 3.5 inch LCD, or if you got a wave share version, um, you could select the one that you have and use that instead. But for now, I'm using HDMI, and then you also got the rotation. So if you want to make this uh, sit upwards or sit this way, um, this is where you would change the rotation. Uh, screensaver and also a delay. Now I disabled it, but you could also use the screensaver if you need to. So next, that is it. I'm, gonna, I'm done setting this whole thing up and I'm gonna hit apply. Once you hit apply, it's gonna reboot this and connect to your PC right away. Now, if you head back over to their software, you could go to a second tab and you could see that your Raspberry Pi is located at that location. There, you could actually change the theme and I'm currently using the second theme. That's what you see on the screens before. 
You could customize the theme if you're more familiar with HTML and Java. And uh, I'll actually leave a link to this website that I'm talking about where it'll show you all the properties on how you pull the API data and what you want to display. So they have a few themes on their own, but you could make your own and you know rotate the screen and make it bigger or whatever you want. If you're more familiar with HTML, you could definitely make it look really good. Now, if you head over to the settings, here you can also change the name to your computer itself in case you have multiple computers that you are monitoring and you want to pull different stats from different things so it doesn't pull the wrong computer. So you can change the name of that module here. But you also have to change it on the Raspberry Pi as well if you're not keeping the default name. Now if you want to change any of the configurations that we just done on the Raspberry Pi itself, simply just navigate back to the IP address of the Raspberry Pi and it should say on the second tab where the IP address is. In my case, it's 133 and all you have to do is just pop that into a browser and you'll be back into the same setup menu. And that is it. I mean, this is a really cool little thing that you could use with the older Raspberry Pi 3. Stick it into your computer and next thing you know, you have system stats coming out of your tempered glass. And I thought this was a really cool thing to put into my recent PC build. This way I could see all my system stats just by looking at the screen. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about it hit it down in the comments below if you guys are new to this channel consider subscribing also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out and as i say my nerd cave hack till it hurts